What's good, everybody? Hope you are doing well today. I hope you guys also had a good Christmas and continuing to enjoy your holidays, either with yourself or family. And I know I spent a lot of time for myself, spent a lot of time with the fam and the GF, and I've also been thinking about a lot of content to make and a lot of videos planned this week. So you should turn on those notifications and make sure you know you don't miss any videos because I will be dropping a special video that I wanted to make for myself and anybody out there that actually wants some uh, a little bit of a motivation for the next upcoming year so without further ado let's talk about cyberpunk 2077 Cyberpunk 2077 was one of the most highly anticipated games of this year and even years before then. This game has been in development for so long, about roughly 8 or 9 years. The development studio CD Projekt Red held a summer conference back in 2012 talking about a variety of things like the cyberpunk genre. But one of the most important things we get from watching this conference is that they are talking about bringing an amazing cyberpunk game to the world. And if you're interested in watching this conference for yourself, the link will be in the description. I recommend watching it because it's really cool to see how hard they worked in the beginning and was really excited to make the Cyberpunk game. Moving forward to 2013, we received a teaser trailer from CD Projekt Red. And I just want to make this disclaimer beforehand, I never knew that this was in development for so long. I never even knew this was going to be a thing until like 2018 when I saw the gameplay. Quite honestly, this trailer looks really good, almost as if we were going to get something really dark or deep aspects of this game. And that's exactly what we got actually, putting aside the immersion breaking glitches in the game. I also want to mention at this time, we do keep in mind that this game was being developed indefinitely. So it was going to drop when it drops. Also around this time, the PS4 and Xbox systems were released worldwide. And look, this is pretty important. The game was being worked on to be optimized for the PS4, PC, and Xbox One initially. And with that being said, was it really meant to be a next gen game? This is still, for some reason, quite a big argument. And for obvious reasons, I don't consider this a next gen game at all because its original optimization was for PS4 and Xbox One. So then you may ask, why the heck does it look so damn bad and almost damn near unplayable on PS4, PS4 Pro, Xbox One, and the Xbox One S? We'll talk about this more in just a second. Cyberpunk showed gameplay five years later at E3 in 2018. Now from E3 2018 gameplay, it seems to be played on Xbox One, right? And it looks fine actually, pretty amazing in my opinion. It was really hype and then massively overhyped later on. And to be honest, they did something a lot of game companies don't do is show massive amounts of gameplay which like a lot of people can analyze it from. There was no very noticeable glitches in the game, which was 40 plus minutes long, by the way. But this is definitely not what we received upon release at all after multiple delays. And speaking of delays, the one we must mention is the second delay because it speaks on the game being tested on the PS4 and Xbox One consoles. So what does this message tell us really? If we are both on the same page, this tells us there was a lot of crunch time prior to its release date, which is a given because of these delays. Second, it's probably not going to run well on PS4 and Xbox One. Cause like, bruh, you testing it more now in those 21 days? Seriously? There is some lies being brought about too as well. Cause the game shouldn't look like this if you were working on it for so damn long. And plus the game went gold, meaning it was ready. And having these delays and unplayable versions of the game has a lot of people frustrated and disappointed. So why does it look so bad on the PS4 and Xbox One? Well, there you go. Th these are your reasons. Now, I couldn't find a confirmed or legit source, but I kept running to articles and tweets of images regarding CD Projekt CEO Adam something i can't pronounce his last name but basically what he was saying is that there needed to be crunch time to be able to finish the game and he was saying that crunch time wasn't really bad and it had a lot of employees upset but even if he did or didn't say that right crunch time in general for game development should just be avoided period 
and you are still rushing the game when you do doing crunch time. Hence meeting this unrealistic deadlines that you're setting for these game developers to finish the game. So we should not blame the developers, blame the freaking corpos of this company for making these unrealistic deadlines that developers need to meet, resulting in a bad launch for the game. The game though is playable but still glitchy for the PS5, Xbox Series X, and obviously PC. It just seems that it was meant to be played on the next gen but even the game still has immersion breaking glitches. And what I hate most right now is seeing people on Twitter, people in the gaming community talking about that this game wasn't going to run well any, anyway because it's seven year old hardware. To me, that is a very abysmal argument to make. If this game was, was going to be bad in the first place for PS4 and Xbox One, then why do we have a game for the old gen then? Why was it originally optimized on the PS4 and Xbox One then? For example, the new Spider-Man game, which is in fact a next gen game, which works really well on the PS4. So that argument just doesn't work and you can't really use that as an excuse because first of all not everybody can build a pc not everybody can get a ps5 or xbox series x everyone doesn't have that luxury to go get those things to actually have it play well so that's why people have it on ps4 or xbox series x because they don't have those things or they just wanted to play play it on those consoles anyway and the fact that they got what they got is horrible and they should get that refund. Last thing I want to mention on the controversy before moving on to the in-game content, talking about the story and stuff, they definitely pulled a Witcher 3. Witcher 3 is one of CD Projekt Red's best games, the game that won the Game of the Year award, I believe. And the homie Omari actually mentioned this to me and I decided to look into the glitches of the game and it's like day one patches and <laughs> <laughs> like to be honest bro <laughs> it looks just so bad bro it's like why do you decide to release a game that looked this bad like look look <laughs> like <laughs> It's honestly laughable as bad as it is. The memes for like these glitches for Cyberpunk and Witcher 3 are honestly pretty funny. And especially with the final boss. I think this is the final boss right here. And I think it's like a... Hold up. Watch this real quick. Look at that. It, it just... He just literally is standing there. He's like stuck for some reason. But it's just so funny. And honestly... These are day one patches, and if you look it up on YouTube, you can find, like, different uh, comparisons of the patches and everything. Oh, my God. He's, like, rapidly hitting him. But, like, you can look up on YouTube, like, geez, these patches and how bad it is. And, honestly, <laughs> it's just funny. But, look, don't get me wrong, though. Witcher 3 is a really good game, and it doesn't look damn near the same as it does on ps4 this is like completely different from what it looks like on its actual last versions though it actually looks way better it plays better and honestly this is a really good game i just haven't really gotten around finishing it and i was like searching through reddit too and a lot of people were talking about how just bad it was playing on like day one on its release and they had to release multiple patches for it to get good because it was so glitchy the reason why i mentioned this is because the company pulled a witcher with cyberpunk but way worse with cyberpunk <laughs> and so it'll be at its best state hopefully by next year and no doubt once they fall through with the planned patches it's gonna be it's gonna be way better so I'm done talking about the behind the scenes of the game's development and controversy. Now let's talk about like the game itself. What I mean by that is like the, you know, the actual story and like combat and stuff and basically my own experience. So I haven't written, I haven't really gotten that far, honestly, in the game. Like I only have about five hours in and 
the reason for that is because I kind of got bored. The dialogue in the world was just sometimes very uninteresting and just flat out boring to me. And it just really didn't intrigue me or catch my attention to keep going with the game. I understand that it's the prologue and it takes some time to get to a certain point where it actually like picks up and stuff like that. But I don't know. It just really wasn't catching me. I didn't really experience any glitches though because I played on PC because I definitely knew it was not going to be good on uh, playing on PS4, which was initially what I was going to buy it on. But I do plan on to get back into playing it soon, but for now I'm just not interested in pouring a bunch of hours into the game for it to get good. At this point I'm just really not interested in playing right now. However, I heard a lot of good things about the story and that Johnny was a pretty cool character. So when I get back into it, I'll definitely will find it more enjoyable. So about the combat, right? I don't like the combat at all, to be honest, from my experience. And, and this is also from what I've seen from other people's experiences is that it just feels really clunky. And the close combat looks like it shouldn't even be there. It just feels like it doesn't mesh well in the game for some reason. Like the close combat is just weird, and the shooting is, it's okay. I think I think the really good part about the combat is really the hacking. I really do like the hacking a lot. I think uh, when I get far further in the game, if I do decide to, um, I think that's gonna be my favorite part, basically. Another wild thing about this game is I don't see many streamers that I watch play this anymore or they just honestly drop the game. It's a lot of mixed feelings with this game in general. I overall do believe that this game will soon up live to its expectation just like with No Man's Sky and how bad, how super bad it was on its launch day. I feel like because No Man's Sky is actually a really good game now, and it, it took a lot of it took a lot of updates to get uh, to where it is right now. But honestly, I feel like Cyberpunk will actually reach to its end goal to where it's going to be a very good game. Don't get me wrong, Cyberpunk really looks like a good game. Like I honestly think it's really cool. It's just some parts is just not. It's just not really connected with me for real. I recommend checking out me and my friend's podcast channel called The Cancel Cast, where we're getting back into being consistent again. And my friends, they talked about uh, most of the stuff that I talked about, but more in depth because they have way more experience and way more time spent into the game. So they have, you know, more, um, more concrete opinions about the game than I do. But this is these are just my feelings in general you should uh, definitely go check that out but i have one more one more petty thing that i have to say about the game and my friends know how i feel about this too okay so i opened up cyberpunk um i'm about to show you guys the uh petty thing that i was talking about and my, uh, what i'm talking about is the character creation right let's go to the let's go to the um the male character okay so you know we got the presets and all that and you know all that's pretty cool um not a big fan of the character creation but what i am not a fan of is this hold up oh let's start let's start let's start from one let's start from one as you can see right the hairstyles are okay just okay right like we got okay we got that now what i fail to understand is why you don't have any afros you see this why don't i have any afros to choose from And this game takes place in 2077? Bro, where are my afros at? I was just so baffled that I can't even get a, I can't even get an afro. Like, but if you go to the, um, if you go to the female character, though, um, you do have an afro option, which is actually pretty cool. 
Like, I don't know why, but the female character, um, you have way more, <laughs> you have better hairstyle options. I don't know why that is, but you have better hairstyle options. Like, I like this. This is great, you know? But it's just like, why can't I get an afro? Like, okay, I could put, I could put a freaking, I could put the male genitalia on, uh, the female character, but I can't put, I can't put an afro on the male character, bro. I just, I don't know, bro. I just don't understand that. It, it, it's a real petty thing. It's not that, I get it. It's not that serious, but like, to be honest, bro, that, that shit, that, it kind of, it kind of pissed me off. I'm not going to lie to you. But yeah, uh, in conclusion though, I really thought it was just kind of, uh, kind of stupid. They didn't have an afro because like they're so nicely versatile with the character creation in cyberpunk i just didn't really understand it but it's not a big deal i get it but i do appreciate that um the versatility in the uh character creation there uh i think everybody would uh, uh most people wouldn't really enjoy it but on the last thing though uh to wrap up this video i just want to say a few things um I feel as though we should really frown upon this crunch time with a lot of games and the corpos of these game companies need to stop making these unrealistic release dates for these games. It's a lot of pressure on developers and it just messes up the workflow and time that needs to be put into the game's release for it to, you know, be actually done and simply run well. And I get it, sometimes there is glitches and stuff like that. That's regular, right? You know, but sometimes there's like, there can be game breaking glitches that's really horrible for the player's experience. And also be careful of people and communities over hyping games as well, because that just leads to ultimate disappointment for people and can lead to unrealistic expectations. Like, don't be one of those people who are like, man, I can't wait for this game to cure my depression, dog. Like, I can't, man, I'm about to take a whole month off of work for this game. Like, just just stop that, man, please. That, that, that could just be bad. Oh yeah, and stop the death threats to these video game companies that didn't meet your expectation. And not only the companies, the developers, and the face model actors that like, voice these characters and act out like the cinematic scenes and everything like you guys really need to stop that not only is it morally wrong but it's a shitty thing to do to someone i remember being it being pretty bad for last of us 2 because they hated the story and abby's character alone and i think the face model or actor whoever's behind that it and it was like, and it's kind of like that for Cyberpunk a little bit right now. And I don't know, just do better, man. Uh, when the game doesn't meet your expectations, it's okay to be mad and sad and disappointed. Those are regular and, and it's completely okay. And what's not regular though is sending death threats. And it's completely demeaning to that person and detrimental that and it affects that person's life. It's really messed up and you should not do it. And as a long gamer myself, I can honestly say it's just not that deep, bro. It's a game. Like, relax, bro. And it's really horrible to see. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. I'm getting back into uploading regularly and I'll finally be uh, streaming on Twitch. It'll be just Saturdays for now at 5 p.m. and sometimes the mornings. So you can tune in then to watch me play like Final Fantasy X or something. Yeah, but yeah, I love y'all. Leave a like, subscribe to support. And remember, nobody can defeat you but yourself. See ya.